Hey everybody, I'm the Ranting Monkey, and today we're going to discuss butts, but not the fun kind. If it seems like I'm talking about free speech a lot lately, it's because I am. And there's a reason for that. In public discourse, there's nothing more important than free speech. Whether we're talking about silly things like feminists and SJWs, or discussing more important topics like economics and world politics, the only way to get progress anywhere is by the free exchange of ideas. You cannot have a free exchange of ideas if you cannot speak freely. As a fan of the subject, I was excited yesterday when I logged onto YouTube and saw Dave Rubin was having a talk at Harvard about free speech. Joining him were Brett Weinstein, formerly of Evergreen State University, and Steve Simpson of the Ayn Rand Institute. For the most part, I enjoyed the discussion. And then this happened. Then what do we do about the, the, the truly bad ideas? So when these white supremacists are out there marching, basically saying that by the color of their skin, that that somehow gives them more... Um, either more importance or more ownership of this country. I mean, it's contrary, of course, to the Constitution and to basic decency and all that. What do we do? Now, I don't want these people silenced, and I, don't, I had to defend uh, Richard Spencer when he got punched. I don't, I don't want, you know, I hate the fact that we use Nazi now all the time, but I don't want these people to be punched for their ideas. You actually make them the victims, which is really what they want. They want to claim victimhood. Um, so what do we do, though, about the ideas that are truly terrible and truly dangerous? That's a... Uh... That's a great question. So I guess there are two things. We'll get to Steve's answer in just a moment, but I want to answer first. I do agree there's two things we should do. First, you make a better argument. If you can't make a better argument than a racist, then you should probably let other people do it. Second, we should mock them for their backward-ass thinking. No one is better than anyone else just because of their skin color. And if you think you are, you deserve open mockery. Now, Steve's answer is a little different than mine. One is we have to have better ideas and confidence in our good ideas. So far, we agree. Have a better argument. And he's absolutely right. Have confidence that your argument is better. If you don't have that confidence, it's either because you haven't done your research or you're too worried about what people are going to think about you for having those ideas. Standing up for free speech can be hard. It doesn't feel good to say this asshole should have the right to speak. And there are people out there who are going to suggest that you standing up for his right to speak means you're somehow sympathetic to his cause. We call these people morons. This jackass is wearing a fucking iron cross. He is a dickhead. But I do still support his right to say any stupid shit he wants to say. And one of the many reasons that I support that is because I have no doubt I could counter any dumb shit that comes out of his mouth. Do I like what he says? No but I support his right to say it. Steve goes on to give a little bit more of an explanation about what he means there, and I don't really have an issue with what he said. It's when he gets to part two that I have a problem. There's, there's a lot of really bad ideas woven into our, our, our laws today, and the First Amendment is no exception. Now, I'm about as, fun, as free speech absolutist as you can find, but... Let me stop you right there, Steve. There is no but in free speech. You can't call yourself a free speech absolutist and then go, but, but you did. So let's see what you have to say. But I think there's something very wrong with the idea. And, and uh, this has been a mistake that the Supreme Court has made for a long time. Very wrong with the idea that number one, that we don't make a distinction between speech and action. We have to make a distinction in the law between speech and action. And number two, there can't be a right to march on public property the way the white supremacists did in Charlottesville. It makes no sense. It's not that I'm, that I'm against you know, uh, people marching for their ideas. They have to do it, I think. If you're going to have public parks and public streets and, and all the like, which we obviously have, we, it, it's just not fundamentally possible to say um, people like white supremacists or anybody have a right to clog the streets, have a right to march in public parks, Think about how the people in Charlottesville felt and, and what they were confronted with. Are you fucking kidding me? You just said you're about as free speech absolutist as you can get, and then you followed that up with feels over reels? Really? As a free speech advocate, you're sitting here saying that people shouldn't be allowed to march in public places. Public, meaning that they own it too, because some other people might have bad feelings? That is mind-blowingly asinine. Hey, a bunch of white supremacists and Nazis show up literally carrying torches in their, uh, in their you know, public parks. You mean these assholes? 
I gotta be honest, if these guys showed up in my town carrying Walmart tiki torches, the only danger I would face is laughing so hard I hurt myself. Look at him for fuck's sake. How much more unintimidating can you get than white guys in polo shirts carrying Walmart tiki torches? And then you get a rival gang showing up and they basically have a gang war, right? And the police are confronted with this idea that somehow this is free speech, that we have to tolerate this as an example of free speech. It's not free speech. Well, you're right. A rival gang showing up would not be an example of these people's free speech. But the chance of a rival gang showing up doesn't mean these people's free speech should be limited. The problem isn't that people march on the city square. The problem in Charlottesville is that the rival gang did show up. What should have been done with these idiots is just to fucking ignore them. Treat them like the joke that they are. Instead, we had people who showed up to passionately tell us how horrible they are and start fights. Now, I'm not excusing the white supremacists. They were just as guilty in the violence as the other side was. However, none of that violence happens if they're just allowed to have their say. If they're just allowed to speak, spew their stupid shit, and they're responded to with laughter, nothing happens. People want to pretend that there's not white power rallies all the fucking time. The KKK still has marches pretty regularly. And for the most part, nobody gives a shit. They're ignored, as they should be. They are tiny little protests and nobody cares. So why was this one such a big deal? That's a topic for another time. What's important right now is that you're doing the very same thing Ben Shapiro did in a video I responded to a few days ago. You're giving an inch. As soon as you start saying, I believe in free speech, except, then what you're saying is you don't really believe in free speech. You're one of those people who believes in free speech as long as it's speech you at least kind of agree with, or at least that you think we should tolerate. You go on to tell us how horrible and hateful these guys are. Sure, maybe they are. But they have a right to be that way. As long as they're not being physically violent or encouraging physical violence against other people, they can say any stupid shit they want. Here's the problem. Once you start making exceptions for free speech, you open the door for everybody to say that there should be an exception for the thing that offends them. How do you say, I don't think you should be able to march on a public square and then tell somebody else that their concerns are invalid? Free speech does not have exceptions. There are no buts in free speech. Period. Either you're for free speech or you're just using it as a buzzword to get attention for yourself and you don't really believe in it. And sadly, in your case, it seems to be the latter. And your justification for it is feelings, which is really fucking pathetic. The First Amendment to allow this sort of free fall for all or to interpret a march as the same thing as us communicating up here. It doesn't make any sense. It's, I think it's just sort of metaphysically wrong. It's, it's, it's a, a real mistake in, it, in the way they view free speech. I mean, just as if I stand up now and I threaten to punch you, that's not free speech, but it is communicating something. And if, if we allow people to get away with that, then they will come to associate speech and force and they will jettison speech. And that's actually what's happening on college campuses. I think a lot of students feel threatened. They think, God, how do I get away from this stuff? Okay, now you're just fucking with me, right? You can't honestly believe this. You can't honestly believe that the reason college kids are against free speech these days, basically, is because they felt they were under attack? And you seem to suggest they believe they were under attack from white nationalists? The social justice movement has been going on for decades. These are spoiled, pampered little shits. Even if you go to the horrors that happened at Mizzou, you're talking about a couple of people who said the N-word and one person who made a Nazi symbol. That's it. That was the horror they were suffering. And that's if we believe the worst of what they claimed. But the social justice movement didn't start there. The idea that we should be limiting speech didn't start in Mizzou. And it didn't start with any of the other stories we've seen over the last two or three years. It's been going on for decades. But let's address your nonsense as though it's real. Just because somebody feels like they're under attack doesn't mean they are. And it doesn't mean that we should justify their irrational fears. What we need to do is tell them to grow the fuck up. What we need to do is tell them, you know what? Sometimes in life you're going to run into things you don't like. Yeah, and occasionally it's going to be a racist. You don't deal with that by telling people they can't speak anymore. And you sure as fuck don't deal with it by going, here's my freedom. I don't need it anymore. Anytime you argue against absolute free speech, that's exactly what you're doing. You're saying, I do not need my freedom of speech anymore. Take it and do with it what you will. The problem here is that we are justifying their irrationality, which is what you're doing right now. 
Imagine how those people felt in Charlottesville because some folks walk through their town. Let them have their little march and then go on their merry fucking way. You don't throw the First Amendment out the fucking window because you don't like what somebody said. And because you don't like how what they said might have made somebody else feel. That is just fucking stupid. Guys, I know I've been on a free speech kick here lately and I don't apologize for it because it is a very important topic. Everything else depends on the ability to be able to speak freely. You cannot have honest, reasonable debate if anything is off the table. And sure, some people are going to come to the table with really dumb arguments. You address them quickly and you move on. You don't tell them they're no longer allowed to speak. Anyway, that is going to wrap up this one. If you enjoy what I do here, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter for as little as a dollar a month. You can also pick up a shirt from the Monkey Store or just share this content with everyone you know. Before I close, one final thing. A special shout out to Sweeper Steven for his hard work finding the infamous meatloaf clip from the Lords of the Night stream. Steven, you're awesome. Thank you so much for watching. I'm the Ranting Monkey, and I'll see you next time. Jettison speech. And that's actually what's happening on college campuses. I think a lot of students feel threatened. They think, God, how do I get away from this stuff? Your life makes me sad. Mm -hmm.